Uh, hello, this is Tola from uh, Trifo Productions uh, with a, another Blender tutorial for beginners. Uh, this is uh, lesson number three, and today we'll be discussing or actually talking about uh, types of selections, uh, the box selection, those are the two main ones, box selection and choice selection, uh, keyboard shortcuts B and C. We'll also be talking about modifiers, which would include the mirror, subsurf, subsurf, sorry about that, and solidify, and other keyboard shortcuts, would, would, which would be control R, which is loop cut, E for extrude, Z for wireframe mode, F for adding faces to your meshes, and holding down the alt key and right mouse button for loop select. Okay, uh... I thought that for this tutorial we could probably model something uh, just to uh, demonstrate the use of the modifiers and the keyboard shortcuts and I just thought you know the simplest thing to uh, probably modify or actually uh, uh, make at this point would be a bowl so I just found this bowl online it's a basic bowl looks like it's made out of wood which looks pretty cool so I thought we could uh, actually make that and make use of the modifiers so let's get started. Uh, right now, uh, I'm using Blender 2.65a. Uh, you might be using a, a, a later version. The latest version out right now is 2.66. If you don't have Blender, just go to blender.org and uh, download it straight from the website, and it's free. It's a pretty great tool to use. Really, re really, really great software. Uh, so uh, right now, you can open up Blender wherever you have it on your computer. Right now we're in the uh, default same with the uh, cube here. Let's press 5 on your number keypad for a more uh, basic view. And press 1 on your keyboard, keyboard uh, number on your number, number pad for the front view. Uh, with your um, mesh selected, and the way you can select your mesh, just hover over your mesh and right click. Press X and then delete. Uh, zoom in by pressing or actually scrolling up on your uh, mouse, uh, middle mouse wheel. And we're going to add a UV sphere. Just press Shift A on your uh, keyboard. Uh, go to, let me see, UV sphere. And let's uh, pull this down. And I wanted to make a, uh, a note. Wherever this little, um, I don't know what you would call this, cur it's not a cursor, this little target deal is. Uh, that's where your mesh is going to appear. So if you have that there and you uh, enter in or add a mesh to your scene, that's where your mesh is going to appear. So just to have that in mind, let's uh, hold down left mouse button on the X axis and drag that over to the center of our scene there. And let's scroll in or zoom in actually by scrolling up on your middle mouse wheel if you're using a PC. Hold down shift on your uh, keyboard hold down your middle mouse wheel and just drag that down to get a better uh, view of what your of your mesh right now we're in object mode go down to um, uh, the bottom left hand corner of your uh, workstation or you can press tab to go to edit mode just click on uh, the arrows there and you can see edit is at the top edit mode click on that and we have edit mode uh, right now we're going to demonstrate the use of the box select and also Z which is wireframe uh, right now we're in object mode so at this point everything is selected press A on your keyboard to deselect everything now the important thing with Z, uh, the uh, wireframe mode is right now uh, if you were to select a mesh and want to select everything from the front to the back if you were to hold down B or just press B on your keyboard it'll bring up uh, these crosshairs here hold down your left mouse button and you just drag it across and it selects everything that you're seeing uh, from the front view only thing is the back of your mesh isn't selected and to select that let's press A press Z on your keyboard and that puts it in wireframe mode press B again or yeah, press B brings up the crosshairs hold down your left mouse button and you drag this across again and this time if you view it from behind it selects the mesh from the front to the back press 1 on your keyboard uh, numpad to go back into front view and then press X 
to delete those vertices and now we've gotten rid of those vertices now we're going to demonstrate the second part or second uh, way to select uh, several vertices at, vertices at once which is choice selection which is a uh, key keyboard shor shortcut C I, I meant to say so press C and then hold down you'll see this little circle appear hold down your left mouse button and just drag it over the vertices that you want to choose and as we do that you can see everything is is the uh, circle goes over gets chosen there let's get that little bit there and then right click to deselect uh, C selection press X on your uh, keyboard and delete the vertices there and once again if you hold down your middle scroll wheel and drag it across your mouse pad you can see that we've uh, quartered the circle or the UV sphere press 1 again to go into front view and now we're going to take a look at the use of the uh, modifiers we've already done the B uh, box selection and the choice selection and we have done the wireframe mode now we're going to demonstrate the use of the modifiers which would be mirror, subsurf, and solidify so we're going to demonstrate the mirror modifier fir first <coughs> excuse me okay go to uh, the right side of your, your workstation and you'll see all these icons pick on the icon that looks like a wrench click on that so you'll see add modifier click on the arrows and uh, kind of scroll through these choices here to find mirror and there you go mirror and you'll notice as soon as mirror is chosen this uh, table appears <coughs> with X uh, selected check in the checkbox and you'll see in your workstation uh, your mesh has been duplicated or mirrored on the left side but by this grayer lighter version of what's on this side which means that now this has been mirrored which is pretty helpful because whatever you do on the right side of your mesh will be done on the left side automatically for example if you move any vertices the same thing happens there control Z to undo your uh, your uh, to undo those uh, moves there and now that we've uh, mirrored our mesh there let's get out of wireframe mode Z and it, you'll notice that um, our mesh is pretty uh, I guess you could use the term chop your rough in order to fix that all we have to do is go to the uh, left side of our tab here and actually if we click on shading oh let's go to get out of edit mode first by going down to our tab here and click on object go back to object mode and then as we scroll up we'll see shading under shading there's smooth and flat so right now it's in flat uh, the flat perspective <coughs> but if we click on smooth it smooths out our mesh now if you don't see this tab here this tool tab just press T or hover your mouse over the uh, plus sign and then left click and then you get your, your tool tab there now we've taken a look at the mirror modifier let's take a look at the subsurf and the solidify modifier now we have our general basic shape of a bowl here let's press 1 again and let's uh, go back to our modifiers here and let's click solidify that <clears throat> if you hold down your middle mouse scroll wheel and drag it you'll see that there has been a little bit of a uh, uh, thickness added to the bowl now in order to make the thickness or increase the thickness just go over to solidify in your uh, modifier uh, tab table here I've uh, seen that point 0.1 is probably a good uh, integer to use for this. Let's uh, add that in point 0.1. And you'll see instantly that the bowl has been thickened here to match the uh, thickness of our uh, bowl that we found online. And I forgot to note, whenever you model anything, person, places, things, wherever it is, make sure you get as many reference pictures as possible uh, in order to make your object look as real as possible and that's what we've done here by uh, getting this bowl okay let's uh, minimize that and on the mirror make sure you click check clipping that way 
whenever uh, any vertices, let's go back to the front view by pressing 1 and then uh, edit mode. Whenever any of these vertices touch each other, they'll stick. As you notice, it's not doing anything because now they've been merged together. So even if you were to pull this apart, if if a clipping wasn't activated, if you were to pull this apart, it would there'd be a big hole there. But since we've checked clipping, now we have one complete solid mesh, which is what we want. Let's tab out of edit mode again by going to object mode. Tab is a keyboard shortcut for edit and object mode also. So now we've uh, done solidify. And now let's uh, look at the third modifier, which is subsurf, which actually makes your meshes much smoother. So now we go to our uh, modifier here and let's click on subsurf. And as you can see, instantly our bowl becomes smooth. And to increase the smoothness of your mesh, you just uh, increase the number of the renders and also with the view. And instantly your bowl becomes uh, a lot better looking, a lot smoother. Uh, but as you can see from our reference picture, the lip is a, a bit sharper there. So what we can do to uh, achieve that goal with our uh, mesh, go into edit mode, and we're going to demonstrate the use of the loop cut, which is Control R. Uh, let me pause the recorder because um, I'm actually doing several things at once, which is probably not a good thing. But uh, uh, hello, uh, back again. Sorry about that. I'm cooking and cleaning and doing a tutorial at the same time. I'm multitasking. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it isn't. Uh, but like I mentioned before, we're going to go and uh, actually check out the use of the loop cut, which is keyboard shortcut control plus, plus R. So what you do is you hover your mouse over this area where you want your loop cut to be. Press and hold down control and R on your keyboard. And then you'll see this pink line appear. You can actually choose anywhere you want after you have you know, added your loop cut. And we want our loop cut to be close to the top to give us that sharpened edge of the bowl. So once you've decided on where your loop cut should be, uh, press down your left mouse button and then it turns orange to show that that's the area you want your loop cut to be in then you just drag it up uh, to the point where you want it to stay and then you left click again and as you can see from our mirrored image the edge of our bowl has now become sharpened which is what we want so let's go back into front view and let's do that one more time because if you look at our reference here the size of the bowl is, is pretty much kind of t tapered in so it's, it's not just beveled all the way down it's kind of tapered in there so you want that look for our bowl so let's add another loop cut pretty much in this area here so control R one more time okay you've got that loop cut left click and left click one more time and then you want to actually press alt s to scale the uh, loop on its own axis this is another um, keyboard shortcut that I did mention this is kind of a an, just a bonus so alt s and then drag your mouse up and you can see it's actually starting to dent the bowl in which is what we want we want to do the same thing with these other vertices to give it us more of a smoother uh, smoother look you can actually uh, press control shift or uh, left click shift on each one to select each one all each one uh, each one of these uh, vertices and select it all at once but since we're just learning blender let's just stick with the basics and so uh, we're going to demonstrate uh, holding down the alt key and right mouse button to, to for loop selection which selects the whole vertice so if you hold down your alt key and then you right click it automatically selects all the vertices on this line so alt plus right clicking selects all these vertices on that particular line one to get that front view then alt s again to scale it on its own axis okay now we're getting the look we're, we're wanting here okay let's do it again for uh let me see this top uh top vertice alt s or alt right click again and let's pull it up a little bit because it's, it's giving us kind of a sharper uh sharper 
uh, edge in this area. And then once we pull it up on the uh, Z axis by holding down our left mouse button over the Z axis, I'll test again the skeleton on its own axis. Okay, pull it up. And then we have something somewhat of what we're still looking for. Alt test or alt right click again to select all these vertices and let's pull this down on the Z axis just to give it a bit more smoothness. And one more time, alt right click on that vertice, alt S again, to scale it on the X axis, on its own axis, I mean. And as you can tell, we're getting the results that we're actually looking for. And now we've got that beveled or that uh, sloping edge uh, that we have seen and we have in our um, uh, reference picture for the bowl. Now the next part is actually getting uh, this little lip uh, or support, I guess you would call it, for the bottom of the bowl. And uh, we're going to demonstrate the use of adding faces to our meshes and E for extruding uh, uh, vertices. So F is a keyboard shortcut for adding faces to a, a mesh, and E is a sh keyboard shortcut for uh, extruding a mesh. So that's what we're going to demonstrate right now. So what we want to do is hold down Shift, and your middle mouse scroll will pull this up, drag that up, scroll up on your um, with your middle mouse scroll wheel to zoom in, and then right click on that vertice. Let's uh, take a look at that. Make sure we've select selected that. So we've right clicked on that. And we're going to delete that uh, vertice. Press 1 again to go back into front view. And press X on your keyboard and delete vertice. And there we go. We've deleted that. And what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to do this, do that again to get rid of these vertices also. Uh, and then we're going to go into wireframe mode so we can select all the vertices all the way through. So press it in your, in your keyboard. And then um, C or B for uh, multiple selection of the vertices. And you just hold down your left mouse button, you just drag that across to select the vertices that you want to delete. Uh, right click, uh, press X on your keyboard, delete those vertices, and there we go. Let's do that again. Let's use B this time just for the sake of, I don't know, um, of change, not doing the same thing over and over. So B for box select on your keyboard, press B. Uh, hold down your left mouse button and drag that across, and there we go. Uh, and to extrude, you press E on your keyboard, and then you right click because it's the, uh, or left click actually because you've already extruded those vertices. So you right, left click, I mean, and then on the Z axis, hold down your left mouse button on the Z axis and pull that down. Okay. And then if we get out of wireframe mode Z and we look, we've seen the, we can see that we have the lip now. But now we want it to be a little bit wider because if you look at our reference picture, it's a little bit wider at the base there. So Alt S again to scale on this on axis and you, you drag it down. Okay. And you can see that the bowl has a pretty nice base. Let's let's shorten that a little bit. Left click on the mouse uh, and drag on the Z axis upwards. Okay. And now we have that lip there. Uh, if we want that lip to be a little bit sharper, remember Control R. That is loop cut. Uh, Control R to give you a loop cut. Loop cuts when they're brought close together, they make sharper edges. So Z wireframe mode. If we can see what what we're doing here, and uh, in this area, uh, hover your mouse over this area, press Control R, and that gives you your loop cut. Um, then you uh, left click and left click again to make sure that that selection that the selection that you want and you just drag that down alt s to scale it on its own axis scale in a little bit let's pull that up okay up a little bit more and then uh, left click the mouse on the z axis to pull that down again okay z auto let's get a wire wireframe mode by pressing z and then as you can tell we have a sharpened, a much sharper uh, section here, more defined edge there. If you hold down your middle mouse scroll wheel and you drag it over, you'll see that there's a hole there. 
which we don't want because our bowl doesn't have a hole in it, so we don't want a hole in our mesh. As you can, um, well, we can't see inside the bowl, that, but that's what we're assuming there. There's no hole there. So, in order to select all those um, vertices at once, remember, according to what we're trying to learn here today, holding down the Alt key and right mouse button for loop select a loop selection. So holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and then you press the uh, right mouse button it selects all the vertices and then you press F and automatically you have faces there so now we have a bowl with the bottom which is what we're looking for press one on your number board on your uh, keyboard there and then you've got you know what you're looking for which is you know a bowl with a bottom now you might say, well, that looks kind of rough, but we can also fix that. Press tab or go into edit mode by clicking on this uh, the left bottom corner with the arrows, edit mode. And then add another loop cut. Uh, that will be control R again. That's loop cut. Left click, left click again, and just drag it down. Oops. And there we go. Then... Uh, Press, uh, get out, go back to object mode and check out your work. And there you go. You have a bowl with a flattened base there and beveled edges just like in our image here. There we go. And now uh, we want to actually add the texture to our bowl. And, you know, like we learned in uh, lesson two, uh, all you have to do with the text, adding textures is you click on this uh, material tab there, this little icon of, uh, I don't know, like a bronze ball and you click new and it's always good to uh, name your meshes because if you're working with a lot of meshes you want to know which mesh which mesh is which so I'm gonna, let's call this bowl B O W L I think that's yeah that's bowl press enter and then um, let's go to our textures tab there and then click on new the texture tab is this little uh, checkerboard looking uh, deal here icon white and red click new and where you see clouds on the textures click on image image or movie then click on both so you can see uh, the texture on this side and the way the texture wraps around your uh, mesh on this in this window and then click open now for myself I usually go to CG textures if you go online just open up your browser and type in CG uh, textures yeah because I always use the textures so it all automatically comes up for me and then it, it has all these textures are basically free I mean the bigger the biggest ones they you have to pay for those but the ones I mean they have a lot of good sizes uh, a lot of different good sizes you can use in any of your message just go to CD textures and you just uh, click on whatever textures you want uh, since that was a wooden texture uh, you would go to, let me see, uh, wood, here it is, wood, and then it would sh appear here and just click through whichever woods you would like to use in the texture, as opposed to going online and looking through scores of pages trying to find the best textures, everything in, is already pretty much set up in CD textures ready to use, so just find whichever wood texture you want to use for your bowl, you don't have to use the one that I'm using, but any one you want, you could download it yourself. Uh, from any website but I use CG Textures which is a good website to use and we go to let me go to where I've placed the Textures Blender Textures and let's click on this icon these four little tile patterns here and that shows you which textures are which and uh, just from visual, visually seeing it and let me scroll down to where I have placed uh, that wood texture I think uh, let me see I think I used I think I used this one okay press enter it's uh, in my external hard drive so that's why it's kind of freezing up here hopefully it, it won't it should be fine you can do it buddy okay there you go okay you can the monkey shows the best uh, pattern in terms of stretching how the uh, texture contours to your mesh because there are a lot of dips and curves in the monkey's head, so you can see how it's going to behave on your texture. 
um, and then we've got it um, attached to our bowl here. Let's uh, let's place our camera uh, so we're to the point where we can see it. So uh, left click on your camera, left hold down your left button and scroll, scroll on the X axis. Press R to rotate your camera, and then zero lets you see your uh, lets you see your mesh through the camera's uh, camera view. Okay, and um, let's go back to one from fr for front view. Let's pull it down on the X on the Z axis by holding down your left mouse button over the Z axis. Three on, on your numpad for the side view. Okay, it looks like it's a good view. Let's press zero again. Okay, it's a little bit too far down. And if you want to move it from, this is just an extra two. If you want to move your camera in this view, just press G for grab and whatever axis, Z, Y, X, you want to move it on. That's what you press next. So Z, you want to move it on the Z axis. So press Z and it moves it on the Z axis. Okay. Let's press through again for the side view. Let's get some more light in here because that light's going to be kind of dim. Now let's get some sunlight, which is pretty strong. Seven from the top, and it's pointed straight at the bowl. Okay, to render your uh, your image, just press F12 on your keyboard, and it should render pretty quickly. Okay, there we go. That's the bowl. Uh, escape to get out of that. ESC on your keyboard to escape out of it. Uh, let's zoom in more uh, on the Y axis. Just click on Y and drag that in. Zero from... Uh, that view. So from the top, let's, let's uh, position our sun to where it really lights up the bowl really good. G to grab your sun as it's selected. R to rotate the sun. Okay, so it points straight at the bowl. Uh, let's look at it from the side view. C or three on your numpad for the side view, and let's drag it back on the Y axis by holding on your left mouse button and dragging it back. And let's render that again. F12 on your keyboard. Okay. So now we've got that uh, that pattern, but it's not looking exactly the way you want it to look from this image. And the way we rectify that is pretty simple. At this point in time for renders, uh, for te using textures, select your bowl by right-clicking over it with your mouse, and then go to textures. And then as you scroll down, it says mapping, the coordinates are generated and the projection is flat, but we don't want it to be flat. We want it to be uh, a sphere. So click on sphere under mapping and then press F12 again. You'll see a big difference. Yes, that's a big difference, but that's not the difference we we're wanting. So escape from that. Um, I did this earlier and it was fine. Let's, let's try tube. Maybe, maybe that was one I selected. Let's click tube. F12 again, let's see how that looks. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Uh, let's escape from that. Um, I think we can adjust the size to like 1.5. Let's try 1.5. I think that's the uh, what I chose on the X, uh, X axis. Let's press F12 again and see what that looks like. Okay, it's a little bit stretched on this side, which I don't know why it is. Um, because I I did this tutorial, I rehearsed it earlier. It had all the coordinates there, and it looked fine. <laughs> but uh, let's let's try it. let's try it again. Okay. Um. Let me see. Let's try let's try cube. Maybe that's a little bit better. Click on that. F twelve again. Okay, so cube was the one to choose. All right, <laughs> so that gave us a pattern uh, that we needed to match the pattern that we have in the image. Even though the squares are much bigger, you can adjust the squares. Uh, there's another way to do this that's a little bit more accurate, but that's when you're more advanced. That's when you have to use um, use seams uh, and do uh, UV. Uh, UV mapping, but right now since we're just learning Blender, we're going to stick with uh, this generated uh, mapping instead. But as we go on in, in more tutorials, we'll learn about UV mapping as we go on. But to increase those uh, patterns, the pattern here, all you have to do is increase the size of the X and the Y. Let's try to increase this to 5. Maybe that'll 
increase the number the size of the squares f12 again that made those smaller so that's let's do that in the opposite direction escape let's do minus 5 f12 again okay that uh, maybe we should change the y also minus 5 also let's see how that works out f12 and it made it much smaller okay um, let me see uh, let's try 1 on the x-axis f12 okay we're getting closer okay uh, let's try 2 or 3 actually let's try 3 F12 and it made it much smaller I'm going let me pause this uh, and try to get the settings uh, right here because I've done it on the other during the practice runs and it came out fast let me let me see what's going on here hold on for a second please uh, hello back again yeah I found out what the uh, issue was uh, that's something to note too whenever you are using a mirror modifier make sure that you apply it uh, before you render a text or render the image because right now um, our mirror modifier uh, has not been applied so if you press F12 uh, this is what you'll get let's escape out of that and let's click on the uh, texture panel and it, I put it back to sphere and it's 1.5 I checked my other uh, settings for the other uh, tutorial and it was these were the correct settings 1.5 for the X and the Y is just one and if we go back to our modifiers with our both selected click on apply for the mirror and then press F12 and then this is what we're supposed to get once the uh, modifier has been applied you'll get this bowl so yeah that is the conclusion of the tutorial. Um, we've gone through the box selection, which is B, uh, choice selection, which is C, for selecting many meshes at once. We've done the mirror modifier. See, see how that works. It speeds up your uh, modeling. Uh, subsurf uh, in the modifier uh, smooths, out, smooths out your meshes. And Solidify adds thickness to your mesh. Uh, we've gone through these keyboard shortcuts plus a few more that I didn't mention uh, in this list, but Control R is for the loop cut to add more vertices to your mesh. E is for extruding uh, your mesh. Z is for wireframe mode. F is for adding faces. And holding down the Alt key plus the right mouse button uh, helps you select uh, a loop of vertices. So yeah, that's the conclusion of today's um, uh, tutorial. And let's add one more light just to give it a better look because at the bottom if you can tell F F11 brings up this another extra that I just threw in F11 brings up your for, uh, f formally rendered mesh there's no light there we want to see you know the bottom of the bowl also so let's press escape and then uh, shift A to add a lamp here let's add another sun and let's drag that sun this way on the y-axis three to look at it from the right hand side on the z-axis let's drag it also uh, let's rotate it by pressing R and then rotate it up and we can turn down the intensity of the sun we don't want it to be as bright as the first sun let's make this half the intensity 0 0.5 0 0.5 I'd uh, bring up this tab just go into your tabs here and click on this lamp icon or sun icon and that'll bring up your sun. So let's press F12 again. And now we can see the bottom of the bowl, the sides, uh, the rims. And it looks pretty close to this bowl, uh, pretty much. So yeah, uh, this is uh, Tola uh, Lubumi from Triforce Productions with this third tutorial for beginners uh, who want to use Blender for CGI animation. Uh, thanks for watching and see you guys on the next turnaround. Alright, adios.